Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be creating a website with parallax effect. First, let's see how the parallax website should look like. This is the website that we are going to create. Did you notice, as I scroll down the page, the background image seems to be fixed and the foreground content is only scrolling. This kind of effect is used with many modern websites. This is called as parallax effect. Actually, in a parallax website, background will be moving slowly than foreground. This effect can be easily added to the website. In this web page, we have an image here with some text in the middle part of the image. And then we have content section and then uh, some more image with uh, some text in the middle and then we have content section. So we have uh, more images and content section, similar sections as we scroll down. So let's look at how to create this website. Let's go to Sublime Text Editor to see the coding for this website. Okay, so in Sublime Text Editor, I am in line number 6. The complete coding of this website uh, is available in the resources section of this lecture. Okay, I am in line number 6. Here we have meta tag with the name attribute set to viewport. So what is viewport? Viewport is a visible area of a web page. That is the area that the user can see with their device. So viewport size varies with the device. Right? So viewport size will be smaller on a mobile phone than on a computer screen. Setting meta name is equal to viewport. It is needed for creating responsive websites. This line instructs the browser to control the web page size according to the size of the device. At the end of this project, for understanding purpose, we will remove this meta tag and see how the website will appear in different devices. Right? Okay. I am in line number 11. We have a div with class img section and image 1. So this IMG section, it's a common class name given to multiple divs. See in line number 22, also we have a class name IMG section. And also in 33, we have class name IMG section. And also I think in line number 45, we also have here the div with class name IMG section. So why, why do we have the same class name in multiple divs? This is because in the output web page, if you see, all the image sections are similar. That is, we have an image and in the middle we have a title. We have some text. And in the second image also, the height of the image is less. But this, uh, it's similar, right? We have an image and we have some text in the middle. And for this image also, we have an image and text in the middle. Right? All the image sections are similar because we have an image with some text in the middle. So we are using a common class img section for all these divs. Going to CSS. This img section class is styled in line number 3 of CSS file. Here we have the styling. And here if you see we have set the position to relative. This is because all the child elements of this div will be set to position absolute. And uh, if this parent is set to position relative, all the child elements can be moved with reference to its parent. Right? So we have seen about this in the previous lecture, position property. Right? So that's why we have position relative set for this uh, IMG section div. Next, we have background size set to cover. This background size cover makes the image cover the div completely. Even if the image size is smaller, it will cover the div completely. And next we have background position center. This background position is to focus on the center part of the image. So next property in line number 7 we have background attachment fixed. This is a very important property and this property is responsible for the parallax effect of this website. Let's go to the output and open developer tools. I am selecting IMG section class and on the right side 
I am going to uncheck this background attachment property. So now, now let's uh, scroll through this website. Can you see the difference? When we uncheck the background attachment fixed property, the parallax effect is not there anymore. So to get parallax effect in the website, we have to use background attachment fixed property. So I am enabling it now. Now we can see the parallax effect. And now I am disabling it. See the parallax effect is not there. Can you see the difference? This background attachment property also uh, takes another value scroll. So when we give background attachment value as fixed, then it will give parallax effect. So if uh, the value is scroll, then it behaves like a normal website because scroll is the default value and it's uh, and it will show the website in a normal way. So no need to explicitly mention background attachment scroll. Even if it is not given, uh, that is the default value and the website will appear in the normal way. Only if we want parallax effect, we will give, we have to give background attachment as fixed. Okay, next uh, in CSS uh, line number 12, 13 and 14. We have styled image 1, 2, 3 classes. So that is in HTML code for each image we have uh, given a separate class. For this uh, div uh, we have given the class name as image 1. For this div we have given class name as image 2 because each div is going to um, have a different image. So this image 1, image 2, image 3 classes in CSS are styled to hold different image. So uh, I have uh, image 1.jpg in images folder and for the second dev it is mapped with image 2.jpg. Okay, so now back to HTML code. In HTML code line number 12, we have a dev with class parallax text. In the output web page, we see some text in the middle of the image, right? So let me refresh it so that we will get the parallax effect. Okay, so now in the output web page, in the middle of the image, we see some text here and also here. We see some text in the middle of the image. That text is placed inside div with class name parallax text. Also in line numbers 23, we have the same div, we have a div with same class name parallax text. 34 also we have a div with the same class name and also in 46. So let's go to CSS. In line number 17, we have uh, styled this parallax uh, text class selector. So we have given position absolute property. The top property is uh, set to 40% to vertically align the div, to vertically center the div in the image. And to horizontally center the div, the width is set to 100% and text align is given as center. Right, let's go to developer tools. Here we have this parallax text div. When I uncheck this top 40% we can see this uh, div going and sticking to the top. And enabling this top 40% it's making this div. So uh, and enabling top 40% is vertically centering this div. Right. And to horizontally align this div we are setting the width to 100%. And text align is set to center. But here we have a question. We know all the divs are block elements and it will uh, like all the block elements will cover the entire line width by default. Then why do we need to set uh, explicitly mention the width as 100% for this div? Let's see what happens if I remove that uh, width 100%. So when we remove width 100% property, we can see the width reduces to content size. See this is the div. I have removed with 100% so the width of the div is only 434.59 pixels. Now if I enable with 100% now you can see this div is con uh, covering the entire line width. So let me just uh, re push in the developer tools. Can you see here when width is set to 100% this div is covering the entire line space, entire line width. You can see the highlighted blue. 
and when i take out this with 100 percentage this div is covering only 434 that is uh, this div is just fitting the content content size this divs with reduces to content size and this is because this div has position absolute this is not a normal div this div has position property set to absolute and absolute elements behave differently and they will not uh, behave like a normal block element if it is a normal block element it is not required for us to explicitly set width to 100 percentage the divs width will be automatically uh, covering the entire line width automatically it will be set to 100 percentage so to show you that what i am going to do is let me take this position absolute so now we can see this uh, uh, div on the top because we have uh, unchecked the position absolute now i am going to remove this with 100 percentage i am highlighting this parallax text div position absolute is disabled and with 100 percent is disabled now the width is set to 100 percent by default since it's a block element even if we uncheck uh, with 100 percentage this div is covering the entire line width because it's a block element right so here only if position absolute property is checked the width will reduce to the content width and in that case we have to explicitly mention width as 100 percentage for the div to cover the entire line space is this clear okay and going back to code in line number 13 we have a span which is a inline element we are using span to style the text parallax website and going to css uh, class selector dark text all the css properties given for this dark text selector is simple and uh, it's understandable right going back to html code here in line number 17 we have a div with class name txt section so this uh, div uh, with class name txt section it is also you can also see that same class name in line number 28 line number 40 all the content section are given the same class name because we are going to apply the same style in css line number 43 this txt section selector is styled and uh, it has text align padding background color all these properties are simple and uh, uh, it's easily understandable right so you can i hope you uh, you can understand all these properties by yourself next uh, in the html part here we have the same sections repeating right we have uh, image section and then a text section we have image section and then a text section so we have same sections repeating throughout the website so let's uh, go to the output and uh, here we have our developer tools open now i'm going to resize this page so in the top can you see something as responsive so here in this drop down when i click we can select different devices if i select iphone this is going to mimic as a iphone device so can you see when i change this to iphone the website contents are fitting exactly according to the phone size and if i say select samsung galaxy so you can for debugging purpose for testing purpose uh, this option is available in all the browsers if i select uh, ipad mini the width is uh, a little more bigger than uh, the phone device now we can see that even if we resize this web page the contents are fitting fitting exactly according to the devices right so that means this web page is responsive that means the content of the web page aligns neatly with different devices to create responsive website we have to use media queries so we will learn about media queries in our next lecture remember we, i told about meta tag uh, viewport so when that meta tag viewport line is not included sometimes in some browsers uh, websites will not be rendered responsive so i'm going to remove this line in html and save it and refresh and here is the output and you can see now when i try to uh, view the same web page in different devices it's not coming out correctly this is because of meta tag uh, viewport uh, line so i'm going to uh, include it in line number 6 and save and let's go to the output
so now it's fine now i am changing different devices and uh, the website uh, it's uh, very responsive but actually the meta tag uh, viewport that line even without that line some browsers will render the page uh, responsively correctly so uh, i remember firefox will not work without uh, meta tag uh, line included i think microsoft edge will work chrome some versions will also work but for it's be always it's better to include that line because no we do not know in which browsers the user will be seeing the website so always it's a good idea to include this meta name is equal to viewport line to uh, make the website responsive okay hope you understood this parallax website project if you have any queries you can email me in the email id given in the course description in the next lecture we will see about media queries for creating responsive websites we have used media queries so we will see what is a media query and how to use it in the next lecture thank you